Well, it's good to be back in the DOS Dude Dungeon. <laughs> yes. And today we are going to be building the Forbidden Macintosh, the DTK. Okay, wait a second, let's back up here. What is the DTK? Well, back in WWDC of 2020, when Apple announced the transition to Apple Silicon, they announced the Developer Transition Kit. This was a device that was intended to give developers a chance to make applications compatible for Apple Silicon on a test device that would never be released to the public. Developers had to pay a refundable $500 fee and they were only allowed to keep the devices for six months, after which time the official M1 Apple Silicon devices launched and the DTKs were collected and destroyed. Or were they? Well, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you might remember that I actually bought a sealed DTK, but more recently, piles of recycled boards have become available. And that's when Colin, AKA DOS Dude, hit me up to say, hey, I think we can build a fully working DTK from one of these boards. So definitely check out Colin's video, which is linked in the description below. And let's find out more about this forbidden Macintosh right after a word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Star Trek Fleet Command, the 4X MMO game set in the ever-expanding Star Trek universe. Fleet Command is cross-play, so you can play on PC and mobile to customize your fleet and experience the Star Trek universe. Choose your path and discover mysteries as you go boldly where no one has before. You can build powerful ships, unlock new officers such as Epic Officer Kirk and Rare Officer Pelia, and you can join with millions of players to pick your faction, conquer territories, and explore new worlds on intergalactic missions. And I gotta say, I'm really impressed with the graphics in this game. They've done an excellent job of recreating things from the Star Trek universe. Plus right now, if you log in every day for seven days in a row, you can unlock Epic Romulan Captain Nero for free. Now Colin, I thought that these were all supposed to be destroyed. They were all supposed to be destroyed, but for those of you who don't know, what Apple does when they want something to be destroyed, such as their prototypes, these DTKs, what have you, is they simply send it to China and expect China to do all the work of destruction and recycling or whatever. Recycling in air quotations, yeah, of course, exactly. because of course they don't get recycled. They come here. If the opportunity presents itself to buy a ton of forbidden Mac logic boards, I'm going to do it. So I definitely bought a few of them and by a few, I mean 50, but let me show you what exactly happened to most of these boards. So all of these boards look like this. They have no storage. The NAND was removed. They also don't have heat sinks and they were all drilled right over here. You can see that hole that goes clean through the board. Now, interestingly enough, that hole doesn't actually render the device completely useless. In fact, Colin has had some success. All of these drilled ones are what are considered CPFM01 DTKs or dev fused. So even if I were able to restore all these boards and get them working, they cannot have production software restored onto them because Apple's uh, TSS server will not sign for dev fused devices. In the case of this one, you can see is drilled um, but I have swapped the SOC on this with one that is production fused in an attempt to get it working. However, as I found out, um, this drill hole, when it is in a correct spot, while it does allow DFU mode and DFU communication through the USB-C port to work, um, unfortunately, as I found out with this one, after fully restoring it, um, this hole also kills both USB-C ports, at least the display out function of them, as well as the HDMI port, and also audio for some reason. So unfortunately, all said and done, these 50 drilled boards that, that you've gotten are not usable. So I tried my best with these 50 boards, which by the way, were not very expensive, but unfortunately they're all garbage, they're all effectively. Gar as such, I managed to find more DTKs for sale um, in, in this case, they are CPFM03 or Prodfuse DTKs, and I was able to get a hundred of them. So this one is a fully restored, fully functional um, Prodfused board. Now what you might notice about this board is A, it's got a heat sink on it. Yeah, that's new. And B, if we go ahead and flip it over here to the spot where the drill hole normally is, 
Well, you can see that yes. it's not drilled. But what you might notice is uh, another issue with the board here. And it's missing is, some b bits of it. <laughs> yeah, and that is that all of these production fused boards, that these hundred that I got from China, are all cut. Now, when you say cut, someone took like a, a pair, pair of, of snips and just clipped snips. the board. Clipped the board. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> Now, I can't imagine that's good for the board because obviously with uh, PCBs like this, like it, it looks like it's a bunch of chips on a piece of like plastic, but inside here are what are called traces, which are typically copper, but they're just a bunch of wires that are laid and going inside the board. So you've got this interesting method here for cutting it out and sort of sanding down the board to ensure that it doesn't short out, right? Yeah, so that is the method that I've gone through in clearing the shorts. Now, what we got lucky about in this instance is that in this particular spot on the board, there's no actual crucial traces that run there that would cause it to stop working if they're severed. I will say, I'm sure Apple is not happy about the fact that you were able to very easily get around this because they send these boards to go get destroyed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and one group of people is clipping the boards, another group of people is drilling the boards, but neither of them Drilled the SOC, which would have yeah. just completely nuked it. Like, you can't get around that. You, no, can't, you can't rebuild the, the SOC area. So the goal for today is to take this board that Colin has gotten fully working and booting. 100% fully functional. Oh which is just what insane. OS is on it? Uh, the latest version of Big Sur this supports, which is 11.2.3. Wow. So we've got a fully functioning DTK, and today we're going to build it into a Mac Mini. It's going to be kind of a hybrid between a real DTK, a 2018, and an M1 Mac yeah. Mini all put together. Exactly. exactly. This is truly the forbidden Macintosh. <laughs> I love it. So we found this seller on eBay that is selling basically a complete 2018 chassis, which comes in the box and everything. Right, it comes with the power supply, the housing, the fan, the power cord, the bottom antenna plate and the Wi-Fi, all of that stuff, but no screws. Yeah, let's put in the power supply first. All right, so I think the first thing I'm gonna do is I need to take the heat sink off so I can run the antenna cable under there, put this on, because this is for an M1 Mac Mini and it's the same port layout as the DTK. There it goes. Easy peasy. Seeing work on a DTK is very funny because it's like, you're kind of building a 2018 Mac Mini, but you're kind of building an M1 Mac Mini. It is very amusing. Okay, so now we've got the port shield screwed in with the heatsink here, and uh, that's pretty much it. That's complete, ready to go in its chassis. So before I put it in the chassis, I'm gonna hook it up to my power supply here just to make sure it chimes and didn't somehow short itself out again. Yo, let's go. So it looks like everything will work in this case, except for the front LED, because on the DTK, that plugs in here with this ribbon cable. And on the 2018, it just has this wire. And you can see it's only two pins because on the DTK, it has an amber LED. Um, but on the 2018 Mac mini, it only has a white LED. That's such a typical Apple moment, but you know what? It's fine. We don't need an LED anyway. The debugging is Colin. We don't need we don't need an LED for that. Look at that. It's like a glove. Fit. Wait a second. Is that the LED? Connector? That lines up exactly with those empty pads on the board. Do you, could it be they is designed that... it to work with the 2018 LED? Do we want to just try to wire it up and see if it'll work? Let's just solder a connector on there and try it, dude, and see what happens. <laughs> All right, so I've gotten a connector. Uh, these can be found on pretty much any unibody MacBook logic board. They're used for the speaker connector, uh, for the speaker on the back side of the board. So I've already got that here. So we're just going to tan these pads on the DTK and solder it on. And hopefully that actually is for the LED. That'll be hilarious if that's the case. Doesn't have to be perfect initially, the solder kind of hold it in place. All right, it's the moment of truth. Got that connector plugged in. If this works, I'm gonna be, that's gonna be so cool. Oh my God. <laughs> Dude, it worked. That's so funny. They implemented, look, they have an entire little circuit for it and everything that they left. 
So when they built these DTKs, they must have left that whole circuit, which is just kind of floating in the middle of this logic board, to run that power LED. D does it do the multiple colors? Or no, no, no I guess no, it, it wouldn't can. because it only has the yeah. two yep. wires. That is so funny. Now, unfortunately, the DTK screw holes don't line up with either the M1 or the 2018, so you don't need screws anyway, it's fine. So from here, it basically just goes back together like a normal Mac Mini. Yeah, it looks like a normal Mac Mini. And we're done. So it's a Space Gray Mac Mini, but with the M1 port layout, but the DTK didn't have the Thunderbolt symbol. So this is literally just like a nothing. No other Mac ever was made that is this combination of Macs. Only one thing left to do now, just plug it into a monitor, keyboard, and mouse and see how it works. I'm very excited. Dude, I am so excited. This <laughs> whole project has just been so exciting. Okay, it's time for the moment of truth. Let's see if it works. LED on, I love that we got that working. So oh man. <laughs> and there it is. A working Frankenstein's monster DTK with a hole in the logic board <laughs> and like a connector taken from a MacBook Pro soldered onto it. And ironically, these things are actually really cheap. So the boards were 10 bucks? $10 each, yeah. So $10 for the logic board, 60 for the Mac mini case. Yep. Um, I had to get an IO shield. So that was 20 bucks? 20 ish. 20 yeah. ish. And then I guess I spent 50 bucks on screws, which you didn't have to do. Yeah, because I had a mini that I took apart for those screws. So. So well. less than 200 bucks for a DTK? Yeah, really less than $200 <laughs> for what? It's a fully working DTK. Look I mean, at that. What, what can I say? Oh, wait. oh it does not the like. The DTK can't go to sleep when there's something plugged into the USB-C port. That's really? Right. Yeah. What? I didn't know that. What? It's in the, Why did they do that? It's in the DTK release notes. Really? Yes. So when anything is plugged into the USB-C, it won't sleep? It can't sleep. sleep. Yes, that's correct. It's like an iPad. Remember? Oh my god, you're right. All right, we're back in the studio, and here is my unofficial but official DTK. It, <laughs> this thing is so funny, I love it. Look at it. It's like a normal Macintosh setup, except it's a DTK. And it was 200 bucks, which is not bad. And I'll let you in on a little secret here. We go to the About This Mac menu, you'll see that this thing shipped with 16 gigabytes of RAM. That's right, the DTKs shipped with double the RAM that you get in the base model M3 Max right now, today, in 2024. That's fun. And they also shipped with 512 gigabytes of storage. Again, double what you get as standard now. Although this particular DTK only has 128 because Colin just put on a single 128 gigabyte NAND chip on it. In fact, speaking of what this thing can do, there are definitely some caveats if you're thinking about using one of these things. Even once you get past the whole hole in the logic board situation, you still have to deal with the fact that these DTKs can only run Mac OS Big Sur. They were never released, so they never got software updates, so they're not supported on anything but Big Sur, and you're definitely going to run into some software compatibility issues. Then there's the matter of what Colin was talking about, which is if there's anything plugged into a USB-C port, this thing cannot go to sleep, so you better use HDMI displays only. And also, the fan is always running. It's just a constant speed. It doesn't ramp up or down. It's just always on. And there is one more thing that I'm forgetting about. Oh, that I'm not supposed to have this. That's maybe a big obstacle. I don't wanna put this thing on my Apple ID. Are you kidding me? So yeah, the DTK is a cool piece of history, I guess. It's not very old history, but it's history nonetheless. So, you know, for 200 bucks, I'm happy to own a piece of that history, but I'm definitely not going to be recommending that you go out there and build the Forbidden Macintosh yourself. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.